Here with me now is the former Conservative Party co-chairman and supporter of Rishi Sunak, Oliver Dowden. Uh, Oliver, good morning to you. Thank you very much for being with us. Let's pick up on what we've heard from the yeah. former Prime Minister right now. A good idea to hold daily emergency COBRA meetings? Well, of course we need to be on top of this situation and we need to be realistic and honest with people about the scale of the challenge that we're facing both with the scale of inflation that's coming down the line, something we haven't seen for almost 40 years, and with the fact that energy bills are going to go up possibly towards £4,000. I would say, though, I don't take enormous lessons from Gordon Brown. Remember, this was a man who gave the 75p rise for pensioners, so he's not really got a great record on this sort of thing. Oh, he's also the man who guided the country through the financial crisis in 2008. Uh, well, we, we, we could trade stuff about Gordon Brown. He's, he's also the person that left us with no money left and... Uh, uh, sold the gold at the lowest price possible. So um, I think Conservatives are perfectly capable of dealing with this situation ourselves. And you've seen that Rishi Sunak did that when he was Chancellor. He announced an enormous amount of support for people uh, in expectation of this rise in energy bills, up to £1,200 for those on the lowest incomes. It's that kind of scale of direct intervention that is required. And I think uh, just uh, proposing to cut the national insurance contribution, which will only help people on the lowest incomes working full-time in the national living wage by less than £60, it is not sufficient to this scale of challenge. That's a list trust idea, it's not Gordon Brown's. We'll come on to that, some of that in a moment. Do you think there should be an emergency budget then, whoever is next Prime Minister, to deal with the crisis we're facing? Uh, well, I think we need to take bold and direct action in response to this. And I think uh, you've seen from Rishi Sunak when he was Chancellor, both in response to the furlough scheme, uh, when he came up with that in a matter of days that saved millions of jobs, and the action he and uh, Prime Minister Boris Johnson took earlier this year. It's that kind of scale of intervention that is required. Is that an emergency budget? Bold and direct action is one thing. An emergency budget is what's needed, isn't it? Well, these things don't necessarily have to be done through an emergency budget. Okay. So if you look at the £1,200 that was uh, uh, announced earlier this year, that wasn't through an emergency budget. But I think there is no doubt that we do need... Uh, an intervention of a considerable scale uh, to deal with this because we have to be honest with people about the scale of the challenge that they're facing. So that's an acceptance then that the amount that was promised earlier in the year is inadequate and more money will be needed for those most in need? Yes, I think that's, that's almost certainly the case. We'll have to see exactly what the, the bills end up. Uh, being I mean, we, we know see, they're going to be over £3,500. Well, pounds. let's see when we know the exact level of the price cap. But if, if it looks like it's going to be at that kind of scale, then of course we'll need further intervention. So we have already seen uh, an announcement from Rishi Sunak that he would remove VAT on fuel bills temporarily to help through this crisis, but I'm sure that further action will also be required. What yes. about an increase in universal credit to help those most in need who will be suffering? Well, actually, if you, you look at universal credit, that is something that uh, Rishi Sunak was willing to do both during the, the COVID crisis when he in increased it by £20 and indeed uh, when he eased the taper rate to help people uh, to, to keep more of what they earn on those lower incomes. But I think it, that, that... But then he took it away. So, I mean, we're, we're going into another huge crisis now in the winter. Will that happen again, do you think? Well, we've been clear that support will be temporary and targeted, so the VAT cut will be temporary. When, when bills fall again, then that support won't be required. But I think the, the point about all of this is, and I think there is a genuine a difference of opinion between uh, Liz Truss and Rishi Sunak on this, that, that Rishi Sunak accepts the need for this, these bold, big interventions. Uh, Liz Truss has put her emphasis on this tax cut, and it's important for your viewers to understand what that tax cut means. For the Prime Minister, whoever the Prime Minister is, that would be worth £1,800 a year, a considerable sum, up to the, the scale of the increase in bills. For somebody working full-time on the national living wage, it's worth less than £60. So we need more and bigger direct uh, intervention to support people. And that's why I was somewhat concerned by the, the position announced uh, on Saturday in the Financial Times by, by Liz Truss. Again, it's not entirely clear what, what the position is now on that. I mean, you're not clear. I, I don't know if we're clear. We're going to speak to Brandon Lewis uh, later in the programme to find out exactly what it is. So you think just Liz Truss just doesn't get the scale of the challenge we're facing? I, I think uh, Liz Truss is a very um, capable person. I've had the pleasure of working with her for a number of years. This is not a, about a personal thing. This is about judgement, though, as uh, a leader of the... Conservative Party and Prime Minister. And I think what you've seen with Rishi Sunak is the judgment that he showed when he dealt with the COVID crisis. It's that kind of big intervention that is required. And my concern is that 
If we simply rely on a reduction in the national insurance contribution rise, then that is not going to help the neediest people, but it will help uh, people on higher incomes. It won't, for example, help pensioners. No, it won't. Let's just uh, talk a little bit about Rishi Sunak. Of, of course, you would have seen uh, for the past few days this video doing the rounds on social media of Rishi Sunak speaking in Tunbridge Wells, talking about making sure that money would be going to uh, areas like that, taken away from deprived communities, making sure it was spread out evenly. I mean, that has left, I think, a bit of a sour taste in his mouth, Let's, uh, in, in voters' mouth. Let's have a listen to that. I managed to start changing the funding formulas to make sure that areas like this are getting the funding that they deserve. Because we inherited a bunch of formulas from the Labour Party that shoved all the funding into deprived urban areas. Uh, and they, you know, that needed to be undone. I started the work of undoing that. I mean, he said he's going to undo that. I mean, that might play well in Tunbridge Wells. Probably doesn't play well in places like Darlington, where he's going to be later in the week. And it certainly wouldn't play well if he came up against Labour in a general election, would it? Well, I think the, the point that Rishi was making, with which I agree completely, is that we need to focus resources on when they're, where they're most needed. And it's quite easy... So you know, if you just to... let me finish this point, it's quite easy to dismiss the south-east of England and say there's not a deprivation there. If you take my own constituency of Hartsmere, it has some of the most affluent places in the country in it, but right next door, in the same constituency, uh, one of the wards is in the 10% the of most deprived wards in the country. Now, it's right that places like that should get support as part of levelling up. And that's precisely what uh, Rishi Sunak has been saying. And I think what you saw under the Labour Party was large amounts of, of resource going into inner cities and ignoring those areas of deprivation that exist across the whole country. And I think it's, it's perfectly right that Rishi Sunak changed the formula in that way. So many should be going to leafy places like Tunbridge Wells as opposed to places that are perhaps more urban? It, it needs to be in the, the most needing places, and that doesn't just have to be in urban inner-city areas, and I see that in my own constituency. Why do we think that Rishi Sunak is behind in, in many of the polls that we're seeing right now, then, Mr Dowden? Well, I, I've been in politics Don't for tell me many you years. can't trust the polls. Well, I'm not saying you can't trust the polls. What I am saying is we have seen time and time again that polls have not proved to be correct, whether that's in relation to... Brexit, Donald Trump, you, you, you name it, all different polls come out. The key thing is the members. I trust the members of this, this party. I work with them incredibly closely as chairman and over many years. I know that in the end, they'll look at the candidates and they can see in Rishi Sunak someone with the values, with the experience and the capability to lead our nation. Okay,